Hello and welcome to my video and demonstration on how to make a hedgehog. Today we're going to have a go at making one of these. This particular one is made from stoneware clay and can be fired but you can make these just as easily from a really good air dry clay. So we'll have a go at that. All right so you're going to need a few things to start with. First thing you're going to need is obviously some clay. So I've got a bit of clay left here. You're going to need something that you can scratch the surface with, something like a fork or I've got my trusty potter's knife here which I'm going to use. You're also going to need something to stick the clay together with, uh, ideally what we call slip. This is the clay mixed in with a little bit of water just to make a sort of sticky glue that will hold things together. You're also going to need something like this. This is my pottery tool but a paintbrush will work just as well. You want the back end of a paintbrush, so make sure you get a nice chunky paintbrush to do that with. And you're also going to need a bowl. You don't need to line this with anything. We're actually just going to use the bowl as is, as you'll see during the progression of the video. So to start with, we need to get some clay. We want a lump of clay about the size of a tennis ball. I'm now going to do so I'm now going to move the camera so that you can watch what I'm doing rather than watching my face so I'll come down here okay and you can see the table better so I've got this lump of clay I'll just put this fella by here so we can watch him you can watch what's going on roll it into a ball just with your hands it doesn't have to be a perfect ball just something sort of round and then get a cutting tool like a knife this can be a kitchen knife doesn't have to be a potter's knife and cut it in half And then we're going to make two pinch pots. If you're not very good at pinch pots, you put it in your non-dominant hand and that acts a bit like a mould. With your dominant hand, in this case my right hand, I'm going to push that into the clay and then I'm going to shape it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep my thumb fairly still and I'm going to draw the clay up like that. So it's not so much a pinching as a drawing. I'm going to, so we go all the way around, I'm drawing that clay up making it higher all the way. And then once you've done that and you've sort of extended it a bit, now you go around and just pinch it, try and make it even all the way around. Don't make it too thin. You need to make it thin enough that it's going to be a reasonable size hedgehog, but you don't want to make it too thin. Ideally, you don't want to go any thinner than about half a centimetre, five millimetres. That's about two eighths of an inch for those of you who work in imperial measurements. Okay, so once we've done one half, we now do the same with the other half. So put my thumb in, and again it's that stroking motion all the way around. Okay. And then pinch it and shape it so it's even all the way. Now ideally what you're looking for is for these two to be able to go together like that if you're clever enough to actually get them into a ball shape that's great i'm not mine always ends up looking like a potato to start with so then we get the piece before we put it on i just want to round it off a bit more on the inside so i get my thumb and i'm just going to push my thumb round all the way around the bottom and just make it a little bit rounder on the top as you see at the moment it's a bit sort of knobbly and weird shaped so i get it in my hand push it round just to even out, bottom out a little bit. There you go, make it a bit more around. So now we're ready to put these two together. So I get my knife and I'm going to rough up the edges very quickly. You can do this, as say, with a fork, it works just as well. Any knife, just to do that on both sides. And this applies a key which actually helps the pieces stick together well. Once we've done that, I get my slip, my paintbrush, and I paint the surfaces all the way around with a nice thick coating of sticky clay. I'm going to help it all stick together. Go 
can do both sides if you want to. I find one side usually enough. Now we've got to fit them together. Now, because these have been made independently, there won't be a perfect fit. And you might be able to find some ways that it fits together better than others. Just turn it around until you find something. Mine's got some huge holes in it, but we'll sort that out in a minute. And once you get it together, just push it down in your hands until the, all the faces meet, if you can. And then we get a sliver of clay. We're going to make a worm out of it. And then paint all around this join. And I'm going to put the worm into the join. All the way around. Okay. Oop, I need a bit more clay. Okay, until it gets to the end. And then to make this nice strong join, what I'm then going to do is using either my knife or tool, whatever, we're going to stroke the clay either side of the join. So it's going to go down onto one side like that and then up onto the other side. So we're spreading it across the join to make it nice and strong. And we'll do that all the way around, going up and down, spreading it across as we go. The aim here is to try and get this airtight. What we want is a sort of an a clay balloon here with air trapped inside that we can use to help to make the shape. So it's quite important to get this nice and tight. If you see any holes, put another piece of clay in it, fill it in. And you'll end up with something like that. Okay. So the next bit to do is to just go around, just smooth it off a bit. So say check for any holes, any places where you haven't got it fixed nice and tight. <coughs> Yeah, I'm not worried about getting it perfect at this point, I'm just worried about getting rid of any big lumps and holes and making sure there's nothing that's going to allow the air out. Then we take our potato, as it has become, and we've got to make it more ball-like. So what we do is get it, just get it in your hands and just shape it. So push it in a bit, just shape it around. As I say, that bubble of air will allow you to push the clay without it collapsing. So we end up with something a bit more ball-like. Now to get this a perfect ball, this is where the bowl comes in. So what we do is we put the clay in the bowl and we just roll it around. And this will help to smooth all those lumps and bumps out and turn it into a much nicer ball of clay. Keep rolling it around, keep turning it until you're happy so that it's as smooth and as round as you can be. So I've turned my potato into a ball. Now I'm just going to look at it and see if there's any spots that I want to do a bit more work on it. There's a few lumps in here, lumps and bumps, so I'm just going to do a little bit more. It doesn't matter too much because we're going to cover all of this as it's a hedgehog, but it's more about getting the shape to start with. So we now have a ball of clay. So we want to make sure this clay is going to sit and it's not going to roll around on our hedgehog. So we get the clay and we drop it on the table and get a nice flat bottom to keep it stable. Okay, let's put that to one side for a minute because now we're going to make the head. We make the head, roll a ball of clay. You want it to sort of be reasonable size, but that's probably a little bit too big. Depends on the size of clay you started with. If you started with a piece about the size of a tennis ball, then you want something about the size of a ping pong ball for the next bit. A golf ball, possibly, but it might be a little bit too big. This might be a little bit too small. We're about to find out. What I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to turn it from a ball into a pear shape. So I'm going to squeeze it around, almost always. So 
got a shape very much like a pear. Then I go to the back of it, stick my thumb in it, because I'm going to make this into a little pinch pot. So now I'm going to pinch it out all the way around, get my bit thinner, trying not to lose the top of your pear. end up with something that looks like a little mountain or a volcano. Now this is going to be the nose here. So now you look at it and you decide which is the best bit to be a nose. Now I like my noses to be a little bit curled up so I'm just going to have a look at mine and see which end, which, part, which way around would be best to get that effect. So you've got a little curvy nose. And I think Go. I might have to even curve them a little bit, but that's going to be the top of my head there. So now we can attach it. So we get our ball of clay back again, and we decide where we're going to put our head. Now you might want it straight ahead, you might want it looking over his shoulder, you might want him looking down at the ground, it's entirely up to you. Me, I'm going to go for just as nice simple looking up. Now this particular clay is going to be fired, and when you fire clay, the air inside it is going to expand and it's got to have some place to go and eventually we're going to put a hole in the body into our air balloon here, clay balloon here, but because I'm going to have air trapped under here, if this air can't escape somewhere it's going to blow the head off. So what I'm going to do is to make sure the hair can flow from the head into the body and then eventually when I put the, the air hole in the bottom of our hedgehog like this one, the air can flow right out. So. Having worked up the I can put my head, I put my knife in, nice and deep, make a hole. Again, you could do this with the end of a paintbrush, doesn't have to be a knife. And then, and this is very important, blow in the hole. It should sound like you're blowing into a bottle. You should hear that little sort of a echoey sound. If it doesn't, then try, make sure you go deeper because if you, again, if you don't go right through and the air can't flow into the body, you're gonna have a nasty surprise. Of course, you don't need to worry about that if you're using air dry clay and you're not going to fire it. It's just a, a thing about firing clay. So now I'm ready to put that on. So I'm going to scrape all round. The head there. Put a nice coating of sticky clay on it. A bit of slip. Oop, splatter it all over the place. And then Remembering which end is my, which way up is my head, I'm going to put it on there, like that. And then, just to make sure it's on, I'm just going to sort of screw it on, a little bit of a jiggle, make sure it's on nice and tight. Okay. Next thing, I'm going to start to smooth underneath. So, where it joins onto the body, we're going to have that all smoothed down there. So, I get down here. Again, you can do this with your fingers, you can do this with a tool, do this with the side of a knife, whatever works, but smooth it all down, just underneath. Don't smooth the top bit, just the bottom. Make a nice, really tight join there. Then, the next bit we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to give us some eyes. So what I'm going to do is either side of the nose I'm going to make an indentation, but I'm going to have to do this with the hedgehog facing me so I can make sure I get them straight. So I get the hedgehog looking straight at me, make sure his nose is right, and then I press in on one side, press in on the other, and you'll have that sort of effect. Right? That's where the eyes are going to go. So next I get a little bit, little bit, little bit of clay, use up some of these bits that are kicking around, and I'm going to roll them up into a ball. Now, once I've got that ball, I present it to the eye socket, and as you can see, that's far too big for that eye socket. So I'm going to take it away and cut a bit off it. 
Okay. Roll it up again. Okay. Still too big. I'm going to cut it again. What I'm actually making here though is not one eye, it's two. Oop, let's move it around. Okay, that's better. Now it will fit into that socket. So now I take this ball of clay and I cut it in half. And hopefully I will have two eyeballs about the same size. So I'm going to roll it up and turn up little balls. Just check that they're about the same size. Sorry, move the hedgehog out of the way. Check they're about the same size. If not, trim them off because it's actually quite difficult to cut a ball in half when you first start out. Then we get a bit of slip. We paint it onto the back of the eyeball. Be very careful not to put too much slip on because you don't want to get the slip actually onto the front of the eye. It will mess up your eyeballs. Well, your hedgehog's eyeballs anyway. Okay, so just get that smooth. I want a nice smooth eyeball. Okay, a little bit of clay. There, stick it in there. Now, at the moment, he does look a little bit like a zombie hedgehog. So we can see if we can improve that. I get into my lids. So I'm going to get some clay, I'm going to roll it out really thin. Now if you have trouble with rolling out worms, the trick is not to press down too hard. As long as you're actually moving the clay, it will go thinner all by itself pretty much. You just have to put the minimum amount of pressure on it. I want this really thin for the eyelids. So I'm going to keep rolling it. his eyeballs are well in. And then I'm going to put a piece of clay around the bottom of the eye, about that length. Okay, so let's just put some slip on that. Again, put slip on the eyelid, not on the body, and try not to get slip onto the eyeballs. So I'm going to put it on like that, underneath the eye there. Then I'm going to do the same on the other side and just measure it. So about halfway around the eye. Okay, like that. Okay. Then around the top of the eye. Okay, just a little bit of slip on there, not too much. I don't want to get it on the eyeballs, like that. And another piece over the top there. You just measure it, do it. Like that. Okay, at this point, he probably looks like he's wearing a pair of spectacles. That's okay though. And what we're going to do next is we're going to smooth these in. So we want to be careful not to smooth it onto the eyeball. As you can see on this fella, you know, you need to have a nice clear cut between the eyeball and the eyelid. So we're going to go around. Again, you can use the edge of a knife, you can use a tool. Um, I'm going to use my favourite tool. And I'm going to just very carefully smooth it down. Hopefully you can see that okay. Around the back. Fix it down. Do the same on the other eye. And then underneath. Like that. Okay. And then we need to smooth it down a bit. Now, one of the tricks is if you're having issues with smoothing clay, is clean your fingers. Clean fingers will always make a difference. Don't do it with wet fingers. Just you can turn your clay sloppy, but just clean your fingers, wipe them dry, and then they find you so much easier for cleaning up. Okay, so let's just have a look at this fella, make sure I've got this right. Let's have him looking at me. I need to have both eyes the same, so I'm just going to make some adjustments. And I'm just going to just push the eye lid down a little bit, so it's not quite so prominent. It's actually covering the eye a little bit. 
Hedgehogs don't actually have particularly good eyesight. They mainly hunt with their sense of smell and to a small degree their sense of hearing. Okay, so that dies on. Excellent. Okay. Then I'm going to do his nose. Now normally when I'm making a sculpture I always say leave details like the nose and the ears and the eyes to last but with a hedgehog we don't want to be handling him too much once we've got his prickles on because you're going to just mash up the prickles and you have to go back and do them again. So try to do as much of the face as we can at this point. So we get a nose. That's probably a little bit big for him. It looks like a little bit like a clown. So I'm going to make that a tiny bit smaller. But they do have quite pronounced noses. As I say, we need them to hunt with. So we get that roll it into a ball and then into so a very slight oval, a little bit of slip on it, attach it to the end of his face. Right. And then I'm going to smooth it down at the back, down here. Okay, squash it on a little bit. Now the noses are quite shaped a little bit like a dog's nose. Let's get that stuck on. So we need to make a hole in it. If you've got something like a, a needle, like a nice big um, embroidered um, tapestry needle or something like that, it's great. Skewer is equally good. Just going to get in there and smooth that bit now. Move the other tool. Smooth between his eyes is a bit lumpy. Okay. But I'm going to use the very end of my knife because that's all I've got. And I'm going to just make a little hole there, and another little hole there for his nostrils. And then I'm going to have a little bit down here, a bit like the dog does. I'm going to come down onto his mouth. His mouth goes straight down, and then into a, into a smile. So I'll do it with this tool. It's easier, but a knife will work just as well, or Again, if you've got something like a skewer, let's give him a smile. Okay. Right. Now I'm not going to do the ears just yet, those I am going to leave to the end. What I'm now going to work on is his prickles. So, <clears throat> put him there safely out of the way while I get my clay. Before we can put the prickles on, one thing we're going to need to make is lots and lots of worms. So again, nice long, don't put too much pressure on it. I know I'm a bit stressed if all my coils start going square. It means I'm putting too much pressure on it. So just one. Again, I find it quite easy one-handed. Some people have been taught to do it two-handed. Personally, I find one-handed much easier. They don't have to be perfect, you'll be glad to hear. Just lots of them. There's one. About the thickness of an earthworm. It's quite fine, just a nice thin wiggly worm. Like that. Yeah, they don't need to be long, mine are just ending up long, but they don't need to be any length is fine. Just make sure you've got plenty of them. Oh, I've got square. There you go. Again, putting too much pressure on it. If it does go square, just squish it back to being round again and carry on. And you don't put so much pressure on it this time. Okay, when you've rolled a nice number, you get your hedgehog and you get your slip and you give him a good coating of it starting with down his spine then you get your worm and starting from the back of the head like that stick it down to his bum there. and then repeat Put another one next to it 
another one next to it. Okay, and I'll put them on the other side too. One there, one to there. If it's a bit short, doesn't matter, you can add other bits in, it's absolutely fine. Right, like that. Some more on the sides. And your aim is to cover him with worms. That seems a bit odd way to do the spines, but I found that by doing it this way as opposed to working from a solid block of clay, the clay, because it has the sort of the gaps between it from the edges of the worms, moves around much better and you get a much better effect than if you try to do it with a solid lump. So I'll put that on there. Uh, right, you have now infill on the side here. We're at that point. And it doesn't matter really which direction you put them, just as long as you cover it all over with them. Right up to there. Okay, on that side. And a coating of slip on here. Do the other side. Fill. Put one in there for good measure. As I say, I haven't done enough worms, I never do. He's going to start looking at this point like he's got a really weird haircut, but that's fine. Soon he'll have prickles. So that they're pretty even on either side, which they are. Then the fun begins. Using the back end of a paintbrush, or if you haven't, if you have access to it, a tool like that. You can also use a teaspoon handle uh, if you've got one that sort of comes to a point, ideal. And what you're going to do is you're going to start just by pressing the clay onto the body. So you just go around it and just press it down. And you find that as you're doing it, you start to make prickles. Right. Particularly make sure that you get in the cracks between the coils. Right. And it starts to go. I'm going to go back to my tool um, just because I find it easier to hold. Go all over. Pressing the clay down. I find if you work with a little bit of a flick, that works really well as well to give that sort of effect. And this makes really good prickles because although you get that nice effect of something spiky, it's actually not that spiky, so they're still quite handleable, <laughs> if you like, when you're working with them or when they're as ornaments or whatever, you're not going to hurt anybody that tries to pick them up, hopefully. I mean, Do that all over. Okay, keep going. Got them spiky everywhere. Make sure you press it in well behind that of the head there. Okay. How's he looking? Good. Still got 
some bits there, so I've got to get rid of them. Put them in. Okay, and we've got the other side. Yep, still got some there too. Okay, I'm just going to reshape him slightly because he's gone a bit too ball shaped. So we have our basic hedgehog now. We spent ages faffing about with prickles, I can assure you. Uh, I'm just going to straighten, straighten a few of them up a little bit. Okay. Now, the bottom of a hedgehog, if you didn't get right down to the bottom, then it's fine. The bottom section of a hedgehog, and I'm just going to chop those off a little bit, is actually, oh, i definitely chop those off, quite furry. So when he curls up, he doesn't hurt himself. So down the bottom here, I'm just going to use my tool just to, instead of having prickles, I'm going to make it a little bit more, a little bit smoother, a bit more like, a bit more like a bit of fur down the bottom there. And the same on the other side. Make sure it's a good join. It looks a little better. Like that. Right. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to give this little fella some ears. And do that by getting a piece of clay, rolling it into a ball, first of all, and then roll it into an oval piece. It's pretty even on both ends. So like a tiny little sausage really, a bit of a chipolata going here. Okay, so a little sausage like that. Then you pinch each end like that. Try to make sure that the two pinched ends are about the same size. Then we're going to chop them in half. All right, well, I'm going to chop them just off at the bottom of the pinch right there. Yeah, like that. Then I'm going to just squeeze them in a little bit at the bottom, make them a bit more like an ear. Do the same on the other one. Squeeze it in a little bit at the bottom. So I've got two ears. Then these are going to go, I might have to make these a bit smaller here, so they're a little bit big. I'm just going to make these a little smaller. Wild European hedgehogs have actually very small ears, They're tucked well into their fur, so they're not really obvious. Um, but the pet hedgehogs that people own have quite have much bigger ears. So then we're going to put some slip on there, and they're going to go behind the eyes on the edge of the prickles. One there, slip on there, one there. And then we need to fix them properly. So again, get a tool. We get in and smooth them down on the back and smooth them in on the front. So they're firmly attached to the head. Okay, in there. If I can, like that. The same on the other ear. Might need to shake that a little bit and get at it. Okay, there we go. There, smooth it in on the back here, and smooth it on the front. Like these ones are truly attached. That way, you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, like that. Okay, I can see I've missed a coil there, so I'm going to sort that one out. I get my prickles right. Now, I want to make the head look furry as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, you can do this with the back end of a teaspoon, do it with a paintbrush. Um, you're just going to make little flick marks. You need a little bit of patience to do this. So the fur under the face is going to grow straight down. And then as you come up the side of the face, it's going to start to Follow the cone that we made. So I'm going to come up the side there. And then straight up between his eyes. Make a fluffy bit at the top here. Okay, same on the other 
other side. Under his nose. Right down to the prickles. Big eyes. Up his ears. Anywhere else you can see where it's not got either prickles or fur. Okay, let me just give him one last check over. His ears are straight, and his eyes are straight, and his nose is straight. And there we have it. One finished hedgehog. Except for one thing that we have to do, which is really important. If this is going to be fired, as I mentioned earlier, we need to make sure this air can escape out of this ball, otherwise it will explode. So, I need to turn it upside down. I'm just going to tidy it up, actually. I've got bits stuck under the bottom, so I'm just going to take those off. Upside down, and then Make a hole in it. I'm blowing it. Okay, that hasn't gone through. So I'll do it again. Hmm. Make that a bit bigger. Ah, that's better. Right. Okay, and we're right through so the air can escape. And now it is ready to be dried. And if you're using air dry clay, he's ready to be painted once it's dried. If you're using fire clay, once it's dried, it's ready to be fired. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, my name is Penny Price. I'm from Crantock Art Pottery in uh, Western Supermare in the southwest of England. Uh, I run classes all the time. I'm doing a lot of Zoom online classes. If you want any more information, uh, please come to my website, uh, which I'll put on the link. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks then. Bye.